I think that one of the claims made by Ms. Avadia was that people should choose how to spend their money. I would like to offer a different view. That was IBM's project debater giving a rebuttal in its first ever public debate Monday. The robot held its own during two short debates and had some success swaying the audience, showing just how adaptable this technology has become. The audience of mostly journalists and analysts said the robot scored better than the human debaters on enriching their knowledge, but the human debaters scored better on delivery, perhaps because the robot sounded like a robot. We caught up with Arvind Krishna, IBM Senior Vice President and Director of IBM Research. I asked what grade he'd give the debater if it was a high school student. I would give it a high school, uh, a high school grade right now. I've been clear about this. So we're maybe in the middle of high school and is going to graduate towards college and then graduate towards graduate school right after that. So, you know, the you know, Project Debater cracked a joke or two, but there were times that it was clear it was repeating news articles out there. You know, how do you make it, how do you improve the performance even more? Uh, so there's two sides on this. One is how do you make the speech much more persuasive, much more well-constructed? And I don't think we'll ever equal the best humans on that, but we'd probably equal and put together a cohesive, lucid uh, speech. On the other side, the knowledge and the evidence that it gives, I think by and large people are beginning to say that, look, it is more knowledgeable and it is giving a lot more evidence uh, towards the claims it spouts. Now we've got to decrease how repetitive it gets sometimes. You've been working on this for six years, That's right? right. So <laughs> this must have been quite nerve-wracking for you. Oh, it was completely. Look, we're going live in front of an audience on a topic we've never seen. It's like your child <laughs> performing in the high school debate. That, that, that's correct. And actually, I've had that experience, and it is nerve-wracking to be in the audience watching that. So how does this compare to Watson winning Jeopardy? Uh, so what's the winning jeopardy was a simple question and answer. When you're giving a question and answer, there is one right answer. When you're trying to form an opinion and persuade people, there isn't one right answer. Out of all the possible claims you could make, which are the three uh, strung together that are going to be the most persuasive? Which three have evidence that is going to then tie to persuade an audience? Uh, this is the whole topic. When you don't have a single best answer or one answer is clearly better than another, there's a whole complex science field now underlying all this. And there are some things that... Watson can't do yet, right? It can't do an interview, for example. Why not? Well, to do an interview, you need to come in with a lot of knowledge about what you're trying to do, what you're trying to convey. Isn't it the same with a debate? No, it's not. In a debate, you're given the topic, right? Like you were given the topic yesterday, we said, should space travel be subsidized? Okay, you're given the topic. Now you can go find things that align to that topic. You can find things that might be against that topic. So it has to argue both sides, really both for and against the against. So what are the things that Watson can't do, like doing an interview, and, and are you going to be working on those? Um, I'm not sure about doing an interview. I would like to have Watson absolutely work on trying to make people much more informed. And to make decisions, which is be, uh, the next uh, phase of being informed, is what we want Watson to really help on. How can you help a geologist make decisions? How can you help a lawyer make decisions? How can you help a lawyer decide which things may best help a brief? How can you help a business executive decide is this decision good or bad, and as opposed to people who have their biases, conscious and unconscious, built in? A machine can then say, hey, I'm not, I don't have any biases. Let me give you all the pros and cons, and you decide. So... Watson has been slow to achieve success in the real world, and there's been a lot of criticism of Watson's efforts in healthcare. There have been layoffs in, in the Watson Health Division. What's your response? I think there's, there's always going to be criticism and there's something new and nascent coming on, and you have teething issues. That said, here's just some statistics. 16,000 Watson projects globally in 45 countries across 20 different industries. I'll take that as being the proof that people are desiring these technologies and are deploying them to get a lot of value in enterprises. And that's what we are focused on in enterprises. So the 16,000 projects at the end of the day, to me, is the most telling uh, statistic. But why is it moving so slowly? I why think, have you had layoffs? Uh, I think always, as you balance in any business, we are both hiring and we rebalance the business. So I think that that's going to be the case. You sort of lean forward when there's something new and you might hire up a few hundred more than you need. Then you realize this is not an area which is going to make progress and so you rebalance. But if I take it as an aggregate, I would say that we have massively increased our total AI trained workforce. We have massively increased the number of people working on AI, both in technology and on implementation projects. If I look at it from five years ago, we probably have tens of thousands more people as opposed to less.
It's been many years since Watson was unveiled, and you know, in just the last couple of years, we've seen Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant. These things have happened, and you know, in the public eye, is IBM behind? Not at all. Our focus is very much on helping an enterprise uh, achieve success and in having enterprises deploy AI, whether it's customer service today, whether it's on discovery, whether it's on reading corpuses, etc. We are not focused on just the assistance world. I think there's a lot of value in those, and I think people are going to deploy those. However, that's a different world of trying to help an individual consumer. Our role is to go help enterprises and governments deploy these technologies uh, to help their employees, their clients, and citizens. So when are we going to see a real breakthrough in how Watson helps me, essentially? Well, if I look at what Watson is helping in oncology, over 30,000 patients served, over uh, helping doctors across Asia and uh, in Africa make better decisions. Uh, in 30% of the time, it finds a better protocol or something that a doctor might have overseen. I think those are all real examples of how it's actually helping behind the scenes.